Anyway, I got one more thing here to read real quick. Just uh, bopping through. I found one of the agent reports for Madison Square Garden. And remember we talked about that uh, in 95 and 96, even the garden had been on its ass. Uh, but then, uh, and we we talked uh, uh, just this past week on the drive through about some of the other documents I'd found in the files, how when Shawn Michaels had his reign as champion, it, the numbers weren't exactly stellar. But then all of a sudden, uh, Shawn, Brett came back, Undertaker got put on top, and then here comes Steve Austin. So this was January 10th, 1998's Madison Square Garden show. Take a guess at the house in dollars. January 10, 1998. The main event was advertised as Undertaker and Steve Austin against Shawn Michaels and Hunter Hearst Helmsley. But then, as they did a lot in those days, they changed the whole card around. But what do you think the gate was? I have no idea. I don't remember what, the, what a gate would have been for the garden at that point. $371,003. Wow. This was at a, it, when, again, I think September 1995, in the, the most drismal dregs of the WWF business, the garden got down to like a hundred and, I think it was 95, $146,000. And that meant they basically paid money to put that show on with ex as expensive as the garden and the uh, associated costs were. And then, you know, once again, when they started getting hot and everything, and now the revamped main event was double main event, actually six man cage match undertaker and Legion of doom against Shawn Michaels and the new age outlaws. And no DQ falls count anywhere. Steve Austin and Cactus Jack against Rocky Maivia and D'Lo Brown, the Nation of Domination. And I loved this as it, when it happened because remember it was Madison Square Garden and we'll talk about this in the Rivals episode later on where Cactus Jack re-debuted as Cactus Jack in the WWF when he'd been Mankind and then he'd been Dude Love. And Kevin Dunn was there in the production meeting. Well, no, nobody's going to know Cactus Jack here in New York in the garden because he was a WCW guy. By the time that they played that video, and it was apparent on the Rivals episode, by the time they played that video in the garden of First Mankind and then Dude Love, when Cactus walked in, they did the split-screen, split-personality deal. The people roared and started chanting, Cactus Jack, Cactus Jack. So Cactus was the perfect face of Foley to me for Madison Square Garden for the people in New York, because that's, that's who he was when they really first knew about him, being as New York was the center of the smart universe, right? You can testify to that. Yeah, I mean, if you were someone who went to the WCW show at the Paramount, that was a few thousand people, you knew Cactus Jack. If you were an ECW fan, you knew Cactus Jack. If you watched wrestling on TV in New York, he was on every, think about it, every promotion that aired in New York, he was on at one point or another. UWF, yeah. I mean, everything. And I guarantee you that the only promotion that Kevin Dunn even knew existed were WCW for obvious reasons and ECW because, you know, of the constant uh blather we would get about what ECW was doing from shit stain and associated parties. He didn't know any of those other promotions even existed or had ever done anything. But nevertheless, we're back to the garden. 15,712 with 3,736 comps for $371,003. Hey, can I stop you? That ain't what? bad. Yes. What's the date again? January 10, 1998. And when did they run last in 97 at the Garden? Because um, they usually had a Christmas show in earlier years. I don't remember if they did one the year before. You know, because this is just the agent report and not my booking book. I do not have the last date information. All right, I'll look it up. You can look it up. Uh, I mean, and I'm just going to bop through it a bit because there's there was a couple of things. The opening match, Taka Michinoku against Brian Christopher. Uh, and Taka rolled him up, and Tony Gurria is reporting. He's the agent uh, reporting 
these details on this show and uh nice little pop on the finish he said they had country whipping match headbangers versus the godwins when the godwins beat the headbangers uh tom brandy versus marvelous mark marrow ended in disqualification because marrow was switching heel at that point right and and just nut shotted brandy right in front of the referee and then uh Mero hit Brandy with the TKO after the announcement. Uh, Gurria's comments, I thought the match was fair, needs some improvement there, but otherwise it went okay. And that's about as effusive as Gurria ever got um, with uh, praising anything that he couldn't really find anything to praise about. It was just, it, and it wasn't Tom Brandy. Mero was just a square peg in a round hole. Uh, they had a challenge match with Ken Shamrock against Farouk, and with Shamrock winning with the belly belly to belly, and then uh, the Nation do a fake breakup so that Rocky can come out and calm them down and shake hands and get the people into it. And then I hadn't re the reason why I kept this, and I hadn't even remembered I did this until I just found it two days ago and read it. They were having a cage match, and they had to put the cage up. So I was there, and they told me, go out, kill some time, cut a promo. So I'm like, well, what, well, just make something up. So I grabbed Hebner, and I said, hey, do something with me. So I go out and start cutting a promo on what I think is very important, but they're pissing me off because they're building the cage in front of me, and I'm trying to look at people, and hey, quit building this cage i want to talk and of course the people are booing that because they want to see the cage match and i call for the wwf official and here comes dave hebner and dave hebner comes out and i start giving him the business and finally he hauls off and nails me and as tony says finally dave ended up knocking cornet on his backside what a beautiful bump james e took also <laughs> it looks like he's lost weight <laughs> Because <laughs> I'd gone on a diet about two months beforehand when I finally got up to 280, and I was like, oh, fuck. The six-man cage match uh, was won by uh, Undertaker and LOD as uh, Undertaker pinned Sean. Then Vader uh, beat, wait a minute, Vader beat Goldust. No. Yeah, oh, yes, Vader did beat Goldust, but listen as Tony says, Vader turned, hit Goldust uh, front on with the big belly and chest. Goldust took a bump. Vader went backwards into the rope and knocked Luna off and was to splash Goldust, but it was more of just a cover. <laughs> and he hooked the leg <laughs> one uh, This is Leon's tail end of his time there. Uh, Kane Tombstone Chains. And then in the No DQ Falls Count Anywhere... Obviously, Austin and Cactus Jack beat Rocky and D'Lo. It ended up with Austin covering Rocky after he got him with the stunner. Farouk and Kama were out there, and they were on dude on the outside. They came in the ring and got stunned. Goldust came in, and he got stunned. So Austin was basically beating up everybody at that point in time, as he should have been. Would you have and, the agent uh, report for the curtain call? You know, well, it it may very well be in there somewhere, because I've got... All kinds of Finkel reports and a bunch of the, but the papers are just everywhere. So it's hard to differentiate until I sit down and go through everything individually, which I have not had. To, I'm just pulling chunks of shit out now and flipping through it. One of these days, I'll I'll put everything in chronological order. So I'll answer that question in the in the future. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> 